you want to give us whatever strength you want to give us we say oh lord we're open we're receptive give us all that we need in jesus name i will pray lord within us our inner man will be strengthened even the outer man will receive health vigor vitality in jesus name bless your people and make you supposed to bless other people thank you lord for the answer in jesus name we pray you don't know how much i love you. amen say that again amen thank you very much you can see that tonight we come to an important subject and it's in Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through Christ, through Him that loved us. That single verse I've read to you, verse 37, is sandwiched between two verses before and two verses after. Verses 35 and 36. And then verses 38 and 39. And then you have this middle verse, verse 37. And it says, Nay, in all these things, what is? What was he referring to? Where do we have the victory? Look at verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, of army, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, as it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. It's after that, after recounting, after enumerating, after listening, all the things that confront believers in many ages at different times he now says nay in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us two verses after that see what it says for i am persuaded that neither death nor life no angels, no principalities, no powers, no things present, no things to come. Before I go on, do you see any kind of grading, any kind of increase, any kind of stepping up? The other ones were read, they just talked about tribulation and distress persecution and farming and nakedness and peril and sword but now he comes to this he said even go beyond that i am persuaded that neither death nor life no angels no principalities no powers no things present no things to come he says 
even the kind of sin that the devil may be thinking of bringing out of the cause, out of his pocket, seems to come. They are not here yet. You see, the devil can never spring any surprise that we are not up to, that we are not ready for. Things present, the things we see, and things to come, the things we don't even know about yet. And then he says, not light, not death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. I want you to notice something, verse 35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ. I want you to notice the latter part of verse 39. It says, All this is shall, that shall not be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. It's like he opens the bracket in verse 35. What shall separate us? He enumerates many things. He closes the bracket. It says there's nothing that can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. And then, right in the middle, at the center, a very nucleus of everything, in verse 37, it says, their name in all these things, we are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors. I said, we are more than conquerors. Before we go on, we need to identify who Paul the Apostle by the Spirit of God is talking about when he said, we, not they. He didn't say they are more than conquerors. It's we. But the question is, who are the we? Romans chapter 5. In Romans chapter 5, verse 1, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Those are the people that are more than conquerors. Justified people, saved people, cleansed people, people who, are, who have peace with God. They are not at enmity with God. They are not contrary to God. They are not in opposition to God. We, the we he spoke about, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, verse 2, by whom we have access by faith. These are the people that have manifested faith. They have come out of the world. They have come out of under the dominion of the God of this world. And they have come in association, affiliation, interaction with the Lord. Because now there is a union between these people and the Lord. Such people who are peace with God. Such people who have been reconciled with God. Such people whose condemnation and guilt have been taken away. Such people that have believed in the Lord, and through that, they have this relationship with the Lord. Those are the we who are more than conquerors, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand. Those who are standing, standing by faith, standing in their conviction, standing in the word, Standing with the Lord. Those are the people when it says, Nay, in all this is we are more than conquerors. The we are the people who are standing for righteousness. They are standing for the truth. And they are standing for the Lord. And it says, And rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Verse 3. And not only so, but we glory. In tribulation, those are the people when trials come, when temptations come, when tribulation comes, when persecution comes. They do not turn their back and they run away. 
He say, I'm going to stand. I will stand and endure anything for Christ. They said, I know that's my, part of my calling. And I know all these things work together for good. For them who are the called of God, who are called according to his purpose. Therefore we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. And patience experience. And experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts those are the we in all these things we are more than conquerors these are the people in their heart they have the love of God and then it says the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost that's the we he was talking about when it says Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. These are children of God. These are believers. These are Christians. These are the people who are washed in the blood of the Lamb. I'm looking at chapter 6, verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? What's the answer? God forbid. Those are the we. The we who know that when we come to Christ, we do not continue in sin that grace may abound. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we? These are the we. The people who are more than conquerors. They are the people that will say like Joseph, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore, we, these are the people, brothers and sisters, when he talks about nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Who are they? They are the people in verse 4. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Those are the people. These are the people who are more than conquerors through Christ. You understand? They have come into the kingdom. They have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. They have been planted together with Christ. They have been baptized in water. And they have identified with the Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 5, For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also in the likeness we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection knowing this verse 6 that our old man is crucified with him these people who are more than conquerors they are the people they have the old man crucified the adamic nature crucified the inbred sin crucified the self life crucified knowing this that our old man is crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed the body of sin the nature of sin the root of sin the generator of sin that is the original root that generates sin into our lives. It says that root, that body of sin, destroyed. And henceforth, we should not serve sin. Those are the people. I pray you'll be among the number. I said you'll be among the number. Then will you be able to rise up in the wings of faith and say, Nay! In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. You are part of us already. Ephesians chapter 6. 
Ephesians chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God that she may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. There is an evil day in the world because of the devil in the world. In verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that she may be able to withstand in the evil day. In the evil day. That she may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, the Lord will give you the victory. But if I did the message to three parts, number one, the conflicts against Christians in the evil day. The conflicts how can you conquer if there's no conflict? How can you win if there is no battle? It's because there is a test. That's why there's a testimony. It's because there is a battle. That's why there is a conqueror. And there are conflicts search against the believers. Number one, the conflicts against Christians in the evil day. Number two, the confidence of conquerors. That's the confidence you have tonight. I said that's the confidence you have tonight. The confidence of conquerors in the evil day. Don't be a coward in the evil day. Don't cringe in the evil day. Don't compromise in the evil day. By the way, Satan does not reward a compromiser on the evil day. If the devil is fighting against you, and you bend, and you yield, and you compromise, Satan is not going to reward your humility, or your meekness, or your compromise. He'll knock off your head if you show weakness, meekness. And if you show timidity in the evil day, in front of the devil, he'll knock you off. Therefore, the conqueror must be confident in the Lord. The confidence of conquerors in the evil day, you will stand against whatever the devil may throw at you. You will overcome. Number three, our consolation in Christ in the evil day. Our consolation in Christ in the evil day. Number one, the conflicts against Christians in the evil day. Let's come back to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, reading from verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love?